Welcome back to Sail Smarts. Now, this week we're talking about habitat, the habitat of the sea. Now, obviously, we sail and winter on the sea or on water, and there's a lot going on beneath the surface on the seabed and all around us, really. All of those different things are habitat, and sea habitat is so crucial to us as sailors and windsurfers and people that enjoy the water. But we probably need to know a little bit more about exactly what is beneath the sea. So we've got in our technical expert, Kate, to teach us a little bit more. Now, Kate, what is sea habitat? So sea habitat is essentially what is under the sea. So around the coast, um, around the UK, we have fantastic lots of habitat. So it's all different. So it could be chalky, it could be rocky, it could have things like seaweed or seagrass on it. So there's lots of different things. It's all diverse, what they call really diverse. Kate, you mentioned seaweed and seagrass. I've heard of seaweed, but, but what's seagrass? Is that the same thing? Oh, yeah. So seagrass is an absolutely amazing sort of plant. It's, a, it's wonderful. It's not like sea, seaweed at all. And um, so seagrasses are not actually even grasses. They're flowering plants and they grow under the sea in shallow water, quite near to the land as well. So, yeah, if you think of seagrass as having roots and stems and leaves and it produces flowers and seeds, exactly like the plants on land as well. But they can be confused with seaweed. So I can forgive everybody for thinking that. I see. Very good. So why is seagrass so important? Oh, it's super important. So again, it's not something you tend to see unless you do snorkeling or you go under the waves and you're a diver, but it's crucially important for so many different reasons. So it provides a real sheltered place for lots of little creatures to live and lots of food for lots of creatures as well. So ones that move on, ones that don't move. Um, it's a massive, massive, really good safe area for um, things like fish as well. So it's a proper nursery area for lots of young creatures. Um, and we call seagrass a, a keystone species as well. So it means that a lot of the creatures depend on it. And it, it's particularly good for a big word called biodiversity as well. So the space where lots of creatures live. And um, so that's not just it, though. There's loads of other things. So seagrass, it kind of slows down the waves as they hit the shoreline. So it protects the land by reducing erosion. And it also renew, removes nutrients as well and pollutants that can run off the land and harm the environment. Um, and sometimes, I don't know if you know this, I mean, I didn't know this until quite recently, but seagrass is often called the lungs of the ocean as well, because it's up to 35 times better at locking away carbon than the Amazon rainforest. So it's got lots of superpowers. It's amazing stuff. Wow, that is incredible. So, OK, where are we going to find some of this seagrass? So it, it's literally all over the coastline. There's lots of different areas that it's in. So we have this lovely little map that I can show you. Um, and this is where seagrass is. So you can see that on the coastal areas, there's lots of little points there. So if anybody lives on a coastal patch, they're normally not that far away from seagrass. So and we've already mentioned as well that it sort of grows in areas where it's really sort of shallow and clear. So if you are a good snorkeler, you can actually go out and try and find this stuff as well and see it for yourself. Oh, wow. So it might be just around the corner from me. Um, you mentioned earlier about seaweed. Now, I definitely know seaweed because when I'm sailing, it always gets caught on my rudder and it's, it's a nightmare. But you said that there's a difference between seaweed and seagrass. So what are the differences? Definitely. Yeah. So they look a little bit different. Um, seaweeds are different from seagrasses in that they have something called a hold fast. So we've mentioned that seagrasses have roots and stems and leaves and flowers like plants, but seaweeds just don't have that at all. And I have, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a, a, a hold fast that's been ripped up from the seabed. Um, and what happens is the seaweed puts down a hold fast and it kind of hangs onto the rock like that really tightly. Um, and that's how it anchors itself. So as a sailor and a windsurfer, do I care about seagrass why is it important to me exactly it's it's so that everybody should care about seagrass as well i mean obviously being on the waves doing lots of sailing you've got a fantastic habitat there and it wants you want to keep it really nice as well so without seagrass we'd have a, a degraded uh, seabed so that would mean it wouldn't be as good for wildlife you wouldn't see so many lovely things down there and as I say it actually gives out loads and loads of oxygen as well so literally every single one on the you know single person on the planet really need, does need seagrass so yeah it's so important for lots of those different reasons great that's super thanks kate right then guys it's time for you to get active at home click on the link below to find the activity sheet and 
If through watching these videos you've been inspired to take up sailing or windsurfing or give it a go, take a look at the links below to see out how you can get involved. All the best and we'll see you soon.